What's up guys? I'm here, I'm gonna show you how to disassemble, clean, and reassemble these uh, Chinese linear bearings. Um, so these guys are Highwind knockoffs, um, HGW20CCs. Um, I'm using these for a custom CNC machine that I'm building, the print NC, well, a, mod a modified print NC. Um, but you can see here I've already got one of these uh, disassembled and kind of soaking inside of a, uh, a tub of, uh, this is like 50% isopropyl alcohol and 50% water. Um, just a, a mixture. And uh, when, I took the, when I took one of these guys apart it wasn't apparent how they are supposed to go back together and I had to... Um, <clears throat> try a couple different ways of putting all the balls back in. Um, so I figured I'd just make this video uh, so anybody in the future that is doing this has this as a reference. So, uh, first of all, you want to soak this for probably 15 to 30 minutes just to try to cut any of the the gunk that, um, that they ship it with. Um, I've had this in here for a couple hours because I was eating dinner. But anyway, once um, once it's been soaking for a while, just take everything out. You need to kind of clean it up. Um, just scrub it with a paper towel or microfiber cloth or something like that. You don't want something that's going to be leaving fibers inside um, because you know these are these have fairly tight tolerances. So you want to uh, you want to make sure all the balls are able to run run smoothly. Um, but just here, you see you can see. Um, all this nasty stuff that it's shipped with um, it's just like some petroleum um, uh, grease stuff so rub this guy off and then I found that it's useful to take a, a q-tip um, and if you have a larger bearing you might be able to just shove the q-tip in, inside these holes Unfortunately, I couldn't make it fit, so what I ended up doing was just taking some scissors and nipping off the end of the Q-tip, like this, just to shave it down a little bit. And then you can run the Q-tip inside these bearing tracks, and just right there you can kind of see how dirty that Q-tip is. Um, just running it down inside that bearing track right there so you want to do that a couple times and I know I said don't use something that's going to leave fibers but I couldn't figure out a better way to do this that's looking a little bit better to the other side Alright, so this guy's gonna pretty much done. I'm just gonna set it right there to dry. And then the rest of these guys, I'm going to just kind of pat them, try to get them a little dry. This and like I said, this is you know 50% isopropyl alcohol, so it will dry pretty quickly. Just sitting out. kind of rub them a little bit, try to get any of that gunk off that you can. Now you do want to make sure once you've got the bearing back put back together, uh, the carriage or whatever you call it, um, you do want to make sure that you end up um, putting some kind of lubrication or grease or something. I'm going to be using uh, lithium grease with the with grease gun application because um, you don't want these to just be rolling dry um, and they will roll, they'll definitely roll better if they're if they're greased 
or if they're uh, lubricated. So, I'll probably just fast forward through the rest of these. Alright, so that's all the plastic parts. What I found is the easiest way to pick up these metal parts is um, to just take a magnet. Um, so either uh, like a shop magnet or even I guess a fridge mag magnet would work as long as it's waterproof. And um, instead of picking each of these balls up one by one by hand, just grab them with a magnet and then kind of drip them off a little bit and then put them onto a paper towel and you want to make sure you don't lose any of these ball bearings because that will significantly impact how well your bearing slides um, so you don't want to lose this, even one of these um, it's very important so that, that's why I'm keeping everything in these containers because I don't want to I don't want to lose any of them All right. So now I'm just going to take a dry paper towel and kind of rub them, try to uh, dry these off a little bit more. Honestly, it's probably not a bad idea to just let all this stuff sit for 15, 20 minutes to let all the alcohol and water evaporate off. Um, just because you don't want to be putting wet parts inside the uh, back in into the bearing um, all right so now I'm gonna start reassembling everything um, so this is your your main housing I guess you'd call it um, then you've got these green end pieces and these white pieces that fit inside the green pieces so you need to look at the way that the ball tracks run um, in this case you can see the ball comes out of one side and then into the inside of the bearing where it can rub across, uh, against the rail. And then these guys have kind of a, a convex shape to them. Uh, or concave, I think it's convex. So you want to make sure the convex shape is pointing down into the green piece. And this should fit like perfectly. There should be no play there. Um, so then you're going to go and put the green piece, and that's still a little bit damp up here. Just try to get some of that off. All right. So you put the green piece with the white piece face down in that spot, and then there's two, three screw sizes that uh, that these bearings come with. There's going to be a small long screw, a small short screw and then a fat screw, actually two fat screws. I'm just going to separate these guys out. So there should be four of these little uh, small long screws, four of these small um, short screws, and then two of these fat screws. So you take these short screws and then you go ahead and install them through these top holes here. And these you can go ahead and make pretty snug. Um, don't, I mean, don't go crazy with it. You don't have to really torque them. You just want them to be snug. All right. I'm going to flip this guy over. Keep finding little pieces of little spots where it's not quite dry. All right, so I'm going to flip this guy over. And now before I put on the second um, white and green pair, I need to take this piece. Now this is um, 
it's like a ball guide, I guess you'd call it. I don't really know. Um, but it's this flat piece. Don't confuse it with this larger flat piece. This is what keeps the uh, the balls inside the, the carriage during storage. But this piece is going to slide in right there. And then we can take the second white and green assembly. I'm just going to dry out these tracks. Any of that leftover gunk out of there. Alright, so put your second white and green assembly together. And slap it on there, and then this guy has to fit in between these green assemblies, it's kind of it's kind of captured there. There's two there's these two little tabs on the end here. And you need to make sure that um, that's lined up properly. And then we can take the other two short screws. Go ahead and screw these in. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and start putting the balls inside. Um, just make sure this is nice and dry. All right. So what I found was the easiest way to put the balls back into the carriage is to kind of lean it up at an angle like that. Um, and then I just take a bunch of the ball bearings and lay them in against the back side. So you kind of keep it at this like 45 degree angle to the ground and then go ahead and put the, uh, the balls in. And then as you're putting them in, you want to kind of slide them so that they go back inside the carriage until you start seeing them pop out the other side. And it may be easier to use tweezers, oops, tweezers to pick the balls up or something like that. Um, I'll probably be doing that in just a second. But you want to make sure all the balls get fed into... There we go. Okay, now you can start see see the balls come out the other side. So now we just want to fill up this space with ball bearings until you can't fit anymore. But they should all fit nicely in a line. So here, I can still fit one more, and there we go. Now, as I push these ball bearings, they'll keep coming out the other side. This one popped out. All right. So you have to be careful here not to um, let them pop out of their little track. Okay. So now you need to take one of these guys. It's a... Uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's like a um, trapezoidal piece almost. And this guy fits up against the sidewall with the long side facing outward. See, it just went in backwards. Oops. Okay. So with the long side facing towards the, the outside, it comes in here. Make sure that's in right. And then it just kind of sits against the uh, that side wall. It doesn't like latch in anywhere. Um, and then you need to take one of these guys with this little hook on the end. And you'll notice that these green pieces are asymmetrical. So there's one side right here where there's a little slot 
that you stick the short stubby end into, so there's this short stubby end, that'll fit into that slot like that. And then this side kind of comes in and, and will latch um, the other side, but I don't want to latch it quite yet because I need to I need to fit all the balls in. So now we can start putting balls into oh no. Ooh, that was a close one. Okay. Now we need to start putting balls into this section of the track. Because there's two tracks. Having a magnetic screwdriver might help here. <laughs> And before you ask, yes, I probably should be wearing gloves while doing this so I'm not getting finger grease on, on this stuff, but I don't have any right now, coronavirus. So I'm just kind of feeding this almost like a, almost like I'm loading bullets into a magazine. One at a time. And now you see they, they start popping out the other side, so I just fill up this space. All right, and that ought to do it. Okay. So now you take one of these guys with the little hook piece, the black piece with the, with the hook on the end. You slide the stubby piece in, and then the hook comes around the side and just kind of latches it in. And now all these balls should be captive along this side. So you can see you've got your back row and your front row. Now I should be able to just take my screwdriver and run the balls through and make sure I don't have any gaps. I didn't miss any. Everything looks good. So now you can move on and do the other side and I'll just I'll just fast forward through this part. All right, I got the back side in. So take the trapezoid piece with the uh, the long Parallel face facing outward. Shove that in there to keep those balls captive. And then I'm gonna fill up the front side. Uh-oh. All right, so here I just figured out that I accidentally left a couple balls out of the back track. So I'm gonna have to go back and fix that. And I might be able to see if I can do this. Maybe I can take a little flat head and just pop them back there. I think that actually worked. So I take a little flat head, pop it back. One more. Let's see. Yep, that did it. Okay, cool. Alright, so that got fixed. So I just gotta drag these guys back in. Alright, so I've got all the balls in. I'm gonna take the little latchy piece. And stick it in, stick the stub in the end there, latch this guy, and then we're going to double check that we don't have any spaces while the balls slide normally. Everything looks good. All right. 
So now you can take these guys, these little red uh, plastic guys, and these just slot in right here like this. And that's pretty much all there is to them. I think these are like wipers. I don't know exactly what they're supposed to do. Maybe it keeps the black pieces retained. I don't know. Anyway, um, so now we can take these red rubber wipers and stick them on the outside here and secure these with the skinny long screws. And actually, don't secure it all the way. Um, make it snug and then back it out by like a turn because you want these floating until you put them on your rail so that they um, can actually wipe away any debris or anything, any sawdust or whatever that might be on your rail. So snug it down and then back it off about a turn. And then these fat guys, these fat screws, I think these are just M6s, um, thread in there. It's a four millimeter. Yeah, four millimeter. And again, snug it down and then back it up like a half turn or so, so that this guy can kind of float on the rail. You can see I can wiggle it. And there's a little bit of little bit of play there. And then do the same thing with the other side. And you got this thing back together. Now instead of my, my last fat screw, I'm going to put this uh, Zerk. Um, and what's this called? It's, a, it's called like a Zerk fitting, I think. And this is where you would attach your grease gun. And that way... Um, you can, you can... Sorry, lots of bit of footage there. Um, I was saying your Zerk fitting is where you attach your grease gun and that way um, you can lubricate your carriages and your rails without getting everything super messy. Um, and then these, these red wipers on the end actually um, keep some of that grease, in, uh, that lubrication inside the um, inside the bearing, it's kind of trapped in there instead of just kind of squirting out everywhere. Um, so now I've got this whole thing reassembled um, and uh, I've got it on my, my Z-axis um, rail here, or one of my Z-axis rails. And even before I've lubricated it, you can already see how, um, how nicely it slides. So, you know, you add a little bit of lubrication to that and it'll, it'll uh, be even better. But anyway, that was it. That's um, that's all I was. I wanted to show you guys how to put one of these back together. Um, if you uh, have any comments, definitely let me know. Thanks for watching.